Oh, good. Here's the latest. <clears throat> How you doing? It's been a morning. It's been barely a morning. It's early. What's happening? It is. But you know what? The week is but I'm going to finish my flooring this weekend, I think. Wow. I still I'm waiting for where, where's the slideshow? I thought we were I need pictures. Well, it's got to be done. Like, I mean, at this point, what's the point of like once the trim is up, then uh then I'll then we'll do pictures. So. Oh, man. So I'm just getting started today. I'm going through the, I, the same person is posting spam everywhere. And this is an account I already deleted. That's supposed to delete all their content in their account, but he's mm. posted away. So it's that kind of morning for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least you weren't, um, you know, losing sleep over a PWA for the insider program because that's been killed. Well, I learned that I'm a better software developer than the people in the insider program. <laughs> it's a jump, but we, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. I project catnip, Brad was the name of it. Yeah, I know. Got a couple other things I'd like to nip over there. <laughs> anyway, it is, it's Friday. Did we mention it, that? Like, I don't think. I feel like last night was Friday, and you're no. calling me up for some reason on a Saturday morning, and I don't know what's happening anymore. Yeah, we went out looking for like a, a media stand to put the TV on, and mm. I got home and like, oh, it's Thursday, isn't it? It's not. It's the do kind you of have thing an that... IKEA near you? I mean, honestly, oh, yeah. we do. Like, I, I'll send you a picture of the thing I have. It's but it's it's just a I, one mistake people make, and I'm probably going to say this, and you're going to be like, yeah, we do this too. But they people tend to put TVs like up high. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want this one. No, you. It's really if you're sitting, it should be slightly lower than you are, mm -hmm. and um, no one gets that right. And you know, for neck strain and whatnot. But uh, we have a very low rectangular, yep, you know, um, media center. You know, it has actually it's just like three open slots and then three drawers. Yeah, that, uh, no, that's like that's exactly what we're. Yeah, just go to IKEA. It's, it was probably fifty bucks or so, or a hundred, <laughs> maybe a hundred bucks. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we have our TV upstairs is mounted in correctly, but it's still, it's like many people, we had to put it above a fireplace. That's just, that was the only place in the room because yeah, sure. the houses were built that way. And so it's, it's fine. I do, like, it, it is weird how a fireplace can screw up a room mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective. Cause obviously they weren't, well, I mean, your TV, I mean, your home was probably built while there were TVs or whatever, but it is. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, yeah, we had this problem in our old house, um, uh, big window on one side, big fireplace, big door opening on one side, you know, and it's like yep. stairs on the other side. It's like, so yeah. You know, where do you put this thing? Yep. That, that's, that's it. And it's been there for 10 years. And honestly, we're just so used to it. It just doesn't even matter anymore, but it did take some adjustment to get, get used to it and whatever. Yeah. But there's one in the basement. I do. I intentionally don't want to put it up high because the ceilings are only seven and a half feet down here. And right, so if right. I, if you put it up high, it's just going to make the room, feel smaller so i want exactly that something that's like <coughs> 24 inches off the ground and then the tv sits on top of it just, and then yeah, just go to like yeah you'll you'll be very happy with the choices yep so i suspect we might be there this weekend we'll see i don't know we went we went to some the only place i could describe it is like a 1970s furniture store um like it, it's like yeah. you just walk in and there's like no organization it's everywhere it literally smelled like incense um and like, it's like, I don't know. It was, it was an experience and yeah. I haven't been to a place like that in a while. I, um, uh, we, I don't remember what we bought, but we found a place in Massachusetts that was like that kind of, um, yeah, like, you know, Bob and Mary own yeah. a furniture store. I don't remember the name of it. Obviously it doesn't matter, but. But randomly uh, driving around yesterday, I went to the dentist as, you know, really exciting stuff and then did some errands. So. Went out in the world like a normal person, which is mm -hmm. strenuous. For me. But I was driving through some back part of Valentine or whatever, and I drove by a like a mom and pop hardware store. Yeah, it's like wow, <laughs> you know, there was one like close to us when we moved here, and it's since closed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those are on the way out too. I, I miss that kind of stuff. Yeah, we have sort of one of those in my town. Um, it was exactly that a mom and pop, and then like Ace Hardware bottom, but it's still the same people there. So it's like yeah. Eh. But it's not, not like the type. 
it used to be the type of place like if you forgot your wallet like oh yeah we'll just open a tab like but that's no longer like that anymore yep. right <laughs> um speaking of things that are no longer like that anymore microsoft's making everybody uh who's an office 365 pro plus customer angry by forcing them to use bing against their All will right, so this decision <laughs> this is so stupid is very much like the sonos thing isn't it like a lot of outrage mm -hmm. and you kind of get the feeling they're going to walk it back yeah <laughs> you know like it just at least give them an option like a prompt well for, for one thing just so people understand too um because i think there's a lot of confusion about this office 365 pro plus is a very specific commercial offering right mm -hmm. so the, the the issue i have with this isn't that microsoft is forcing people to use bing because you anyone could reverse it but that they're doing this in a commercial environment like yeah it seems like like the outrage here should be from it like whoa 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 like we decide yeah what we force our users to do like you know that's or or we don't i mean that's our decision you know like i i i think that that part of it's crazy i also don't understand technically why microsoft search and bing or whatever this offering is called uh isn't or needs a default search engine to work properly. Like mm -hmm. that could be the starting page. Um, yep. This is a very useful feature. Like I think both of us yeah. agree that this is a good thing, you know, the feature, but like f changing the changing the default search, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Speaking of Sonos, because we haven't talked about it enough this week, did you see that their CEO issued a statement, yeah. a memo, basically walking back some of it um, well, was... it, it's interesting because he touched on some of the things we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not, like, cause I had asked you, right. Remember I, and, and I was thinking about this because of my own son, situation, but, uh, where I have, my daughter has certain speakers that she's using and I don't ever want to play to those. Yep. Um, I don't, I don't want to block her from playing to the other ones, but I mean, it, it would be, you know, and it, so it occurred to me in thinking about that, like why. I asked you, you know, does Sonos have the capability to have like two networks or something mm -hmm. like, could you. You know, how, how, how would a user do that? Because it seems like that would be the solution to this problem for some people. And they're basically working on this, like the the ability to segregate the older the speakers to their own, I don't know if it's a mesh network or whatever mm -hmm. they call it, but uh, basically he kind of said what we talked about. I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. And, and it went further than I thought was the um, required, I guess, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see what they muster up between now and May. <laughs> well, right? I, I will mean, tell you, the, the one thing I have a lot of experience with is the pace at <laughs> which Sonos does things. Yeah, that is true. And you do too. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be quick. No. <laughs> but but whatever. You know, the, the, the point of this is that um, they heard the, you know, uh, complaining always works, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, they, they heard the complaints and I, I think they, they're doing more than they need to, but there, there you go. They're a little more customer centric than I think anyone was giving them credit for over the past five days, all of a sudden, even though every, this was the most beloved company, you know, tech yeah. company on earth until this week. Um, so it, it seems like they're doing the right thing. Yeah, we will see. I mean, it's, you know, what. We'll... I don't know. Part of me wishes that they would just say, hey, look, if you have one of these old devices on your network, you can just do like a feature freeze and you'll never get any more updates. And this is just what it is and it'll continue to work. And I think that would solve the problem for everybody. But I don't know if they're going to do that. Yeah. So we'll find out. We'll find out. And then the other thing happening this week is Microsoft basically ruined Stadia by putting uh, Destiny 2 on xCloud. So if you were buying Stadia to play Destiny 2 everywhere, there's no need. I don't know. Yeah. Also, no need to buy Stadium. Yeah, I mean, well, that, I think that's, <laughs> you know, I think that's the bigger issue, at least right now. It will continue <clears throat> to be the whipping post of the gaming industry until they figure out some sort of strategy that's not um, put all the games we already have on other systems into a cloud, which Microsoft is doing at a faster pace than. So. Yeah. yeah. And that's about all we got. It's a Friday. You got anything else, Paul? <laughs> I mean, there's... I haven't gone through the spam, like the spam comments, so not not really. Um, I will write up the Sonos thing. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, you know, I, I have this page up as we were doing this, and it's like, you know, the complaints about Sonos just ongoing. And it's like, I'm so glad I didn't invest in Sonos products. And it's like, well, I'm so glad you felt compelled to write a 100-word, yeah. <laughs> you know, comment about, like, how terrible they are as a company. 
<laughs> and it's like, I, I just, I, the outrage over this, I, I find this kind of thing disturbing because I think this speaks to the quality of um, conversations, the wrong word, but conversation for lack of a better term that we have mm -hmm. online these days, which, you know, I wrote about recently. I mean, it's amazing how quickly people can get agitated over something yep. that doesn't even impact them, <laughs> you know? Um, so also this person used the word edible twice. I think he meant eligible, <laughs> but whatever. They're, they're probably edible too. I don't know. If you're brave enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's something you could do with it. They're cut, you know, they could, they could feed you, I guess. If they don't <laughs> play. Anyway, I'm glad Sonus is doing the right thing. I, mm -hmm figured they would do the right thing and they're doing more than I thought was necessary or whatever. Um, yep. but I think that's, you know, that's the big thing for me this morning. I mean, also if you haven't done it too, I mean the surface duo thing, um, oh, yeah. positioned as a developer release, which, you know, it is of course, I mean, um, people who know how to develop an Android, uh, using Android studio or by the way, uh, Xamarin, um, apparently, mm -hmm. Um, should take a look at this and see if dual screen compatibility is of interest to you. But the thing that's fascinating about this to me is that the emulator is just an EXE. So Microsoft clearly designed this so anyone could do it. Yeah. Because um, I saw this. I'm like, well, I'll go through the process. I, I've used Android Studio a lot. It's a really hard product. It's much more difficult to use than um, Visual Studio, and it performs terrible. It's a, a terrible product. But um, I was like, well, I'll look at it, you know, maybe over the weekend or something. But then I saw a bunch of other, you know, Rich Woods and others uh, who are not developers had gotten this thing up and running. And I was like, huh, maybe it's not that hard. And it's actually, it's way easier than I thought. Like it's, um, they clearly designed it so anyone could do this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have to install Android Studio because that's how you get the emulator, the actual Android emulator. But what Microsoft has provided is the, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, like an image of the OS that runs in the emulator that emulates this dual screen device. So if you want to mm -hmm. see what it looks like, you know, there it is. It's real. It's real basic. You don't get all the apps and everything. It's um, it's basically like an AOSP kind of a deal from an app perspective. But it does have Edge and um, uh, Swift Key. It gotcha. has a two screen, and you can rotate it and all this. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. So neat. if you're interested, you're curious, you know, you should check that out. There we go. All right. Well, all right, I'm going back to bed. This yeah. was fun. Yeah. <laughs> So, folks, that wraps it up for today. Um, if you're listening to this, you realize that it's not 1 p.m. It's probably earlier. And uh, we will be back Monday unless another holiday somehow shows up.